Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Heidi Carr, your moderator for this session in room 11. Um, the session title is Career Exploration and Connections in Nevada, and I'm excited to be able to learn from Chris Merriman. This session, we're going to be learning about Pathful Explorer and Pathful Connect, also known as um, NEPRIS for Nevada. These are free resources we provide to many Nevada educators, courtesy of purchases made on through by the Nevada Department of Ed. Of Ed. Ooh, sorry. These tools better prepare Nevada students for Nevada careers through exploration and industry connections. You'll learn about setting up your account, professional development opportunities, and expanding access to all students and educators within your district. Go ahead, Chris. Thank you, Heidi. Um, happy Saturday, everyone. I know you're towards the end of the day's activities. Um, I'm coming in from Philadelphia, actually. Uh, and um, it's not sunny here at all, because I always get that question. Is it sunny there? No, it is storming like crazy. So hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully I don't lose internet along the way. Um, anyway, I, I've been working with Nevada for almost a year. Uh, but we've had a partnership with Nevada for uh, multiple years, going on three, maybe more. Um, basically, there's a few things that are actually a little bit different, even from the sort of primer that Heidi gave you. Um, a little while back, our company, Nepris, was merged with another company called Virtual Job Shadow. And the two companies were merged to form a new company. So it wasn't like we were um, one gobbled the other or anything like that. Uh, a brand new company was born out of that merger called Pathful. Um, so I'll kind of talk about that name change and I'll talk about what that means for you guys. Uh, but you know, as I, as I get into it, I kind of want to give you a, a sense of what you have access to um, no matter, it, it's technically for grades six through 12, but if you um, are an educator that is outside of that scope, that uh, doesn't mean you don't have access to it, it just means that uh, we'll need to communicate about that. Um, but you, you, you will be given access, we just need to uh, have a short conversation about that. But everyone grades six through 12 has access to one of our platforms called Pathful Connect. And like Heidi said, um, there, there was a special partnership called Nepris for Nevada. And because our company name changed, it obviously made sense that we would uh, undergo a name change re related to that partnership itself. So it's gone from Nepris for Nevada. And now that partnership is called Nevada Pathways. And it's a special version of the Pathful Connect platform that's just for Nevada educators, students, parents, and professionals. Um, and and the, the goal of the platform is to provide access to industry guest speakers. So you would have uh, the ability to tap into a network of industry professionals from all over the country, uh, in some cases the world. And of course, there's also a little bit of a local flavor as well in that we have industries in Nevada that are partnered with us as well. So we have a number of those. Uh, so you'll be able to tap into those for your own classroom, for your own program, whatever, whatever that is, whatever that means. Um, we also provide industry webinars. <clears throat> and again, they're offered uh, through our industry partnerships nationally, but we also have Nevada series that we do as well. In fact, we have one scheduled for later this month uh, I will definitely show you guys how to find those sessions and be able to register for them so that you can connect with Nevada Industries. <clears throat> Everything we do is recorded. So um, once the session is complete, we will re uh, we'll take the recording, we'll process it, we will edit it for content, we will blur out students and any student identifying information and we'll put it into our video library. And lastly, we have some career exploration tools built into the platform as well. Um, <clears throat> typically, when I do a presentation, I am often talking to CTE educators. Um, however, I myself am a former STEM educator that actually used NEPRIS in my own classroom before I left teaching. So I will 100% um, share some thoughts and ideas based on my own experience and based on discussions that I've had with English teachers, social studies teachers, history, government, 
CTE, outside of CTE, you know, everyone has a use case uh, for what you guys can accomplish with the platform. Now, with that said, um, there are some individuals that have access to our other platforms. So just to reiterate, Pathful Connect is um, the platform that is accessible for everyone grades six through 12. Um, and again, and beyond, if, if, if you guys just reach out to me and, and I have my contact info later on in this session. Um, but there is a segment of the population across Nevada that also has access to Pathful Explore. And um, that is an exploration platform that is a little bit more student driven, student assessments, student um, activities and videos and lessons. Uh, what the, uh, the population that has access to explore is transition students from grades eight through 12. Um, but we are in discussions with a few different districts to get explore into the district uh, beyond that. So um, if, you, if you're interested in, in learning whether you have access to that or what your district is, is thinking about, uh, you can just shoot me an email um, and I'll, I'll make sure that everyone's on the same page. And there's also discussions about junior and planner. There's a lot that we want to do in the state of Nevada. Um, so our, our goal down the line is everyone has access to everything. Um, but today, what I'm going to mostly discuss is Pathful Connect, because that's the one that has the widest scope. Uh, of implementation and the widest level of access. And I just want to, uh, I, I presume Heidi that this is recorded so people will get this after the fact, but are, are we also gonna be able to share with them the slide deck or information so they have my contact info? Yep, if you drop it or send it to me, I've been e emailing it to Nevada Department of Ed folks and they will put it on the Canvas page. Sounds good. Um, so everyone here will have access to our contact information. Um, I'll also provide some additional uh, sort of uh, quick start resources that we've developed. I, I actually just sent a box of flyers out to Huda Hassan, who oversees uh, a, a number of teachers from NDE. And I also sent a box to Sam and Maria, who work in a uh, similar department. Um, so there should be some actual physical flyers that will be going out to uh, districts and in, in, in schools, um, but this will also have my contact info and we'll make sure everything gets digital versions as well. I'm going to sort of drop out of here and I'm going to uh, jump into the platform itself. If anyone wants to, since you're all on a device, uh, sort of um, delve into the platform yourself and you want to log in, I'll just uh, leave this here for a few more seconds so that you uh, can, can drop nevada.nepris.com in your browser URL uh, search bar, and it'll bring you to the, the main landing page for Nevada. Yes, I know it still says Nepris in the URL. I don't have a, a timeline for when that's going to be updated, um, but even when it is, it will you know very likely, even if you continue to put nevada.nepris.com, it'll redirect you to whatever the new URL is once that's changed. So um, if you wanna do that, go for it. I'm gonna drop out and actually do the same thing. So we're going here, nevada.nepris.com. I can tell from some of the attendees and you have like CCSD in the name and um, I'm not sure uh, where everyone's coming from, um, but again, it doesn't matter what district you're in, you do have access to this. And the best way for you to log in is, A, don't worry about creating your own account. All educators um, should already have an account created for you. We are in the process of setting up ClassLink and Clever integrations with every single district across the state. Uh, a few are already set up. So in Lyon County, for example, we just completed the Clever integration. So um, if you're in Lyon County, you could also log in with Clever. We're working in CCSD. Um, as you can imagine, that's a long process to get integrated with the rostering systems uh, in CCSD. Washoe's a work in progress. Elko is probably the next one that's gonna be done. Um, and then there's others. I'm, I'm still trying to get into contact with IT departments all across the district. Uh, because we want to get every single district and charter school and what have you uh, set up through an integration. But no matter what, if you want to log into your account, you go to this URL and just click sign in. 
And I would venture to guess that for 100% of you, you're either going to use the login with Google. Let me just log out of mine because I want to show you this. For nearly 100% of you, signing with Google or signing with Microsoft is going to work. Uh, so like I said, CCSD is Google. Washoe is Microsoft. Uh, Lion is Google. Uh, I'm just trying to name drop a whole bunch of districts and I know what, what their SSOs are. Um, but every single district in the state is pretty much either Google or Microsoft. So if you choose one of those options and then just enter your district email and password, it will get you into your account. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Actually, I'm gonna go to a different, here we go, sign in. Sorry, I keep jumping back and forth because I have to make sure I'm logged into the right account so that I'm showing you the Nevada page and not just the general. So I have a personal email that I use for this particular version of the platform. Once you enter your platform for the first time, uh, what I want people to do uh, is verify that it says platinum in the top right. Like I said, we're working with districts to make sure everyone is either integrated with the rostering uh, through Clever Classlink or uh, historically before those rostering, we would have to get lists from district administrators. Um, and so what I typically do is I'll say, okay, first thing I want you to do is check for platinum. And if you don't have platinum, when you get my email as part of the follow-up to this session, just shoot me an email, let me know that you're bronze. Um, it would be helpful if you uh, tell me what school and district you're in. I could guess the district based on your, um, you know, your email, but the school would be needed as well. So I know what school to add you to. Uh, and hopefully this is something that we don't have to do down the line as we get more of these integrations set up and all the rosters are set uh, in that way. So that's kind of the last bit of house cleaning uh, that I would need to sort of share with everyone here just to make sure that you're able to log in, able to access your account uh, and know who to go to if you want to uh, make sure that your account is actually upgraded to platinum based on the contract that we have with the Nevada Department of Education. So I'm going to show you a few different things that you can do, and hopefully I can do this in, in an amount of time that gives everyone here obviously a chance to ask questions. Um, feel free to go off mute and ask a question at any time, uh, but I do hope to have a little bit of time towards the end where if everyone wants to just log in, if you've never logged in before, um, this would be a great opportunity to do that just to make sure that uh, while I'm here, I might even be able to upgrade a few of you if I need to, uh, even before this session is done. I mentioned that one of the top things that you can do in the platform is you have the ability to tap into a professional network to um, basically virtually join your program, whether it's a classroom, whether you're a counselor, what have you, um, virtually through uh, this request form. Um, and it's there's tens of thousands of professionals nationwide that we can tap in, in, into to fill a session for you. So a few different ways you can do that. You can start from a template, which is basically a pre-filled request that has everything sort of filled in for you, or you can essentially start from scratch. And I'm going to show you the start from scratch portion, just so we can kind of talk a little bit about the process of uh, making a request for a professional, the different types of requests that you can make. I think a lot of people are only limited by their um, sort of their imagination when it comes to what's possible with this request. Uh, and I'll also talk a little bit about what my experience was and the experience of some educators that I've spoken with uh, and what they've done and some unique things that they've done. So the first thing that it's going to ask you to do is going to say, choose a session type. And this kind of highlights the different types of uh, interactions that you can have with a professional. So you'll notice right at the top there is project mentoring and evaluation, which in my mind is um, probably one of the coolest uses of the platform because when I was teaching, everyone was telling me how great project-based learning was, and it absolutely is. And I remember every single time I went to a professional development session about project-based learning, they kept telling me I needed to engage the community. I needed to find a way to uh, give my students an opportunity to present or to interact with 
people that are working on similar projects in the real world. And I remember thinking, that sounds great. Where do I even start to do that? Um, and so this is actually one of those places that you could start. Um, if you have students doing a, and I did this a lot in my classroom, I had them do um, podcasts a lot. That was one of my favorite projects was getting them to do a podcast. And one of the things I always regretted not being able to do was bringing someone in who knows how to actually create podcasts. It was a great project from my perspective, but I didn't have the ability to engage people that were outside the classroom to kind of help uh, mentor those students and to help sort of evaluate their progress. So this is one use case for putting in a request where you could actually say, I have students that are working on a podcast about um, you know, some topic and I taught environmental science. So I did a lot of environmental topics. So either bringing in someone who knows how to create podcasts or has worked with podcasts or even bringing someone in from the environmental science community to kind of evaluate the content of their con uh, of their podcast. Like these are really good examples of the types of uh, engagements that you can facilitate through the platform. But of course we also have, you know, your run of the mill topic presentations, your career preparation discussions. Um, so, you, you know, when you get kind of more into the, I want someone to come in and talk about a specific career and how they got into that career and, and tips that they would give students on how they can get into that career, those are obviously on the table as well. I'll throw in mock interviews is a common implementation. I've had a group that does salary negotiations. Um, and so it, it really is like I could name a, a hundred different things uh, in terms of, of what different types of teachers and counselors and whatnot have used the platform for to get a professional to help them with. Uh, and those are some of those examples. You could also, for anyone who maybe is a department head um, or something along those lines, uh, we've also had a lot of sessions where students aren't involved at all. And they just want, during maybe a PLC, they want to bring in a professional to get them up to date on what's happening in a certain industry. Um, you know, as an educator, even if you came from the field, like if you're like a former engineer and now you're teaching physics or something along those lines, which is quite common, um, the, the field of engineering might change. Uh, it might change very rapidly. And if you're having someone who is in the field today, speaking with you or speaking with your students, you're by definition getting the most up-to-date information. And the, the best example of that is, I guess the pandemic itself kind of um, resulted in a rapid shift in what the workforce even looks like and what it means to work day to day. Um, and I've heard a lot of, and I've had a lot of discussions with individuals and in, in, in education and, and they're saying that students are Zoom fatigued and I totally get that. Um, but uh, that is also kind of, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a fine line to walk because in the last um, CT advisory meeting that I was in, almost every professional said it's a critical new skill that students need to have uh, no matter what the career they're looking for. And it's how to present yourself on Zoom. Um, so it's like, yeah, we get kids are Zoom fatigued. And, and there's definitely, um, in my mind, I would never want to replace in-person interactions with virtual, unless I absolutely had to, uh, but there is a place for being able to break down geographic barriers and understanding that this is the world we live in now. Um, and so, you know, I kind of went on a little bit aside, but not really, because the professional development for teachers part is a good opportunity for teachers to get sort of that feedback from the professionals in terms of what types of skills are really critical for our, your students in this ever-changing world. Um, and so that's just a really perfect example of that. So if I do choose career preparation, what it does do is it gives you some prompts, um, but essentially everything that's part of this form is editable. Uh, it's completely up to you what you want this session to look like. Based on my own experience, my biggest piece of advice is to give a prospective professional room to breathe. Give them room to be themselves. Because I can tell you the first time I did this, I, <clears throat> I wasn't the kind of teacher that wanted to have complete and utter control over my classroom. Uh, but I do recognize in hindsight that it was a little uncomfortable saying, I'm going to give my classroom over to someone else. 
And as a result, when I filled out this form, I spent way too much time putting in a hundred different questions I wanted them to answer. I wanted them to tick off 15 different boxes. And essentially I scripted the professional and I really just in, in, in hindsight kind of wanted them to uh, say what I wanted them to say. And that I think is not the right way to go about bringing in someone from outside the classroom. Obviously there's very important pieces of information that you want to share with them things that they need to know about you, your class, your content, your population, things of that nature. Um, but give them just enough to understand all that and to uh, to prepare for the session in a way that you want them to, while at the same time, giving them enough freedom to talk about what they think is important about that topic. That's the entire reason we're bringing them into the classroom in the first place. Everything is basically given to the professional to kind of help give them an idea of what that population is. Um, so it's 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 all, a lot of this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you want to start to narrow down the types of individuals you want us to find for you, you can start adding industries. You can add uh, different company preferences. These are preferences. Uh, they're not necessarily. Uh, guarantee that it's going to be from that exact specific domain. Um, if we think that we're going to have a little bit of trouble finding precisely what you're looking for, we'll communicate with you and we'll say, hey, you know, do you mind if we open this up a little bit? Um, there's a few things that you're asking for. We, the people that we typically tap into for that just aren't available at that time. Um, we'll work with you uh, to make sure that we find someone suitable uh, for, for your program. But really, what all is said and done. You just let us know how long do you want it to be? Uh, what time and date do you want it to be? And how many students do we expect there to be? Um, a few things to note. You'll notice that today being September 9th, it's not allowing me to put in a request for less than two weeks. So that tells you right away that there is a minimum two week lead time. With that said, the sweet spot tends to be three to four weeks, If especially if your request is a little bit more in niche. Um, you can make a request that's as broad or specific as you'd like. I only like to say on the back of that is uh, the, the more specific the request, the more time we probably need to fill it. Um, but, you know, you don't have to worry about finding the person. You just tell us what you're looking for and we'll go ahead and find them for you. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You can choose to have others. Uh, educators join if you like. If you put in a session and um, you have it scheduled, you can just send another teacher the link and they can join it as well. Um, and then there is the possibility that you may have had someone in the past. Uh, this is a very sort of infrequent use of the platform, but it is possible. If you've had someone in the past and you want to uh, request them again for some time in the future, you could do that as well. Just be aware that if you click yes, I want to directly request a specific person. Um, if they're not available, then it's just going to default back to us trying to find someone for you anyway. So it doesn't hurt to do that necessarily, um, but uh, it, it is something that is possible if, if you choose. So when you uh, are done, you click submit and then you're you're ready to rock and roll. Like You just go off and, and go do lunch uh, and then we will find someone for you. Um, along the way, you will be able to find where your uh, sort of what the status of your session request is here. Um, and so we have like different stages. Like if you initially submit it, uh, it'll just be in requested. That simply means that you have it in the system. It's a good way for you to confirm that it is out there. Um, and it means that we're in the process of looking for someone for you. Once a professional accepts your session request. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to, tap into our network. It'll also send an automatically generated email out to all the professionals that uh, might fit the criteria you're looking for. And then once somebody accepts it, you would then find it under confirmed. So confirmed simply means that you've got a request in and we have uh, found a professional for your request. One of the things you might want to do in that scenario is you'll definitely be able to see who that professional is. So you can click on their profile, you can send them a message, 
you're able to engage with them, obviously, you know, a lot of educators want to actually touch base with the person that they're going to be having speak to their students uh, during, uh, during whatever period that is. Um, but there's actually another really cool feature that uh, you'll find under a session. If you find your session under requested, this is actually, you know, it, it, I'm, I, I have Clark County in mind, um, but it's not necessarily specific to Clark County. I'm just familiar with how the bell schedule is for a lot of classes in Clark County. You might have two of the same class at different times and dates. Um, so uh, I, I, I had a rotating schedule myself. So I might see one class on Monday at 10 a.m. And I might see the same class on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Just using those as examples. Maybe they're both environmental science classes, uh, just two different prep, two different classes, same prep. If you put in one request, say you put in one for Monday, you don't have to do anything other than copy the initial request to put in the same request for the Tuesday class. All you'd have to do is find it under requested. There'll be a button that says copy request, and then you can just change the time and date. So the request itself is identical other than the time and date that you're asking for. Uh, it's very likely to be two different professionals. Um, I actually think that's a strength because often we have um, forum type of uh, sort of tools, maybe in our LMS, maybe we use Google Docs or some, some sort of collaborative online resource. And if I had two different professionals talking to two different classes, but it was about the same topic, they're very likely to learn a lot of things that are the same, but they're also likely to learn a lot of things that are slightly different. And utilizing those collaborative resources, uh, again, through maybe like I use Schoology, so I use Schoology forums all the time. Um, so I would have my one class do say one activity, they would put what they learned from their activity in the forum, then the other class would do the same thing. And then they would both be in the same online location. Google Doc works just as well for something like that as well. Um, and so they could, you know, they can collaborate on the different things that they've learned from two different professionals, again, about the same topic. Um, so there's a lot of really great opportunity for that cross collaboration. I often talk about um, STEM classes because obviously I, I come from a STEM background, but I, I don't want to uh, sort of neglect other, other uh, subjects because I've had a lot of conversations with English teachers. Um, I know English often English teachers sometimes do resume reviews. So think about those, think about um, cover letters, Anything that is part of your English program that is tied to that career preparation work that you do, you can utilize a professional to help um, sort of with the best practices with those students. But a really cool implementation that I heard uh, from a program over in California, not too far from uh, the, the border, was English teachers were inviting professionals to kick off a new novel. And... Um, I, I, I don't remember the exact example that they used, but I'm thinking maybe like To Kill a Mockingbird, which is all about, um, you know, it's obviously it takes place as, as part of a, 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 a court proceeding and, and you have lawyers involved. And so you could bring in a lawyer to come and talk about what they do and, and talk about, you know, the different types of law and what proceedings look like and, and what it looks like in the real world. And then when they're reading the book, they're tethering more of the content of that novel to the real world and less on what they see in law and order or what they think they know about what lawyers do. And so it kind of was a really great way to get students more excited about reading the book because they have this interaction with someone who actually does the work in the real world. And then they can make, you know, compare and contrast what happened in the book compared to what is it actually like. Um, so a really, really interesting implementation there as well. I mentioned earlier that we also have webinars, and this is where we're going to start to see a little bit more of the Nevada specific um, ideas. I will say, I, 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 for, I neglected to mention, when you do put in your own request, we have an individual, uh, we have a couple individuals that actually work on the Nevada requests. So we see them come through, and if we see requests come from Nevada educators, um, we flag them and we will uh, communicate with our Nevada industries to see if we can get someone local for that request. 
Um, again, not guaranteed. Our number one priority is filling the request. Our number one priority is finding a match for your session. Um, but if you put something in and the Desert Research Institute, which is a, a industry that we're working with more recently, um, is a good fit, we would reach out to them and say, hey, we just want you to know this teacher from Elko County put in a request. They're, they want to learn more about this. And, and we think you guys might have someone who could fill that session for them. Uh, so we'll try to, to make that session request filled with a Nevada professional. Um, but if, if those fall through, we could always default and sort of fall back on our national uh, network. But industry connections, which you would find under join a scheduled session, these are preset. So if a teacher requested session or a create your own session is what we call a teacher or an educator poll. Uh, you're putting out a request and you're trying to pull in a professional to uh, speak to what you want them to speak to. These, the industry connections, which used to be called industry chats, which are essentially webinars, um, are considered pushes. So our industry partners will run series. They'll do one-off industry chats. And, and these are put into the platform so that uh, classrooms and educators and parents, by the way, can also do all of this. Um, they can join these at a pre-scheduled date and time. If you go under events and series, or if you go under my community, you may be able to find things that are Nevada specific. So if I click on my community and I look at Nevada pathways, there are Nevada flavors or Nevada industry is directly involved with all of these. So for example, we know we have Nellis Air Force Base. And so we have a lot of Nevada educators that join um, series that are delivered by the Air and Space Force. Uh, but we also have a series of um, industry chats that are in fact delivered through the Nevada Pathways Partnership. And you can recognize those because you'll see the logo right here. Uh, so we actually have three um, industry chats that are upcoming uh, later in September called Pathways to Careers. Um, the sort of the main driver of changing the name to Nevada Pathways is the idea that we want to help students recognize the variety of ways that they can find a not just successful, but a meaningful and rewarding career. Um, and so it could mean you are going to college and you're going to get a master's or anymore, you get a doctorate. Or it could mean I'm going to get work right after high school, or it could mean getting an apprenticeship, or it could mean doing an internship. Like there's so many different ways, even with individual careers that you could get towards that career. Um, and we just want to highlight those. And so we're running a series that is going to highlight some of those Nevada industries. And they're going to talk about, again, some of the different things that you can do that fall under maybe a broad domain. Health being a really big example where we try to get students to understand there's more than just doctors and nurses that are involved in the health healthcare industry, or in this case, specifically orthopedics. So if you find a session that you're interested in and you click on it, you'll notice that there's a couple of different options. One, you can certainly register to attend any session live. Um, these are obviously ideal. Um, for anyone who watches this reporting after the fact, that's going to be less engaging than if you're here live, especially if you want to be able to ask questions and if you want to have a little bit more of that Q&A or back and forth with a professional. Um, so we always sort of try to encourage people to make sessions live if they can. Um, however, we, we certainly know that class schedules being what they are, that means that they may be very difficult or even impossible. Uh, so you can always just say, oh, well, I can't attend it live, but please email me the video. So we want to definitely make sure that everyone's aware that the recordings are a great backup way to engage with any content you're interested in. However, one of the things that we're having conversations with some district leaders across Nevada is um, we try to want to make sure that there's at least one person if not from every school, at least every district that is attending these sessions live. And the reason for that is if I am someone in Clark County and I have, and I watch a recording of a session and everyone in that session is from Northern Nevada. And the questions they ask are kind of more 
geared towards that community and the challenges they face and the goals that they have. Not to say that they're necessarily different or the same. It doesn't, that's not really the point. Um, but you're not getting content that could be a little bit more specific to you. So if you find something that is really exciting, but you can't make it live and you want to request a video, it might be worth having a conversation with someone um, that you know it, within your educational community that can. And then you guys can think, okay, well, what kind of questions would we want to ask during this session that might benefit our students the most? Um, and so that would be a really great opportunity to have the video sent to you that will be a little bit more specific to what you want to know or what you want to learn or where your students would find most meaningful from that interaction. So just food for thought uh, on that one. I mentioned that everything is in fact recorded. Um, <clears throat> these recordings are sort of split into two different um types. There's the full length videos. And if I go back up here, you'll also see that we have micro videos. Uh, the micro videos is an ever growing um, list of videos, but they're essentially recordings that are sort of, uh, we take in bite-sized pieces out of so that they're a little bit shorter, they're more digestible uh, for students, but you always, always have access to full recordings as well. Um, and so a recording is essentially what would be sent to you if when you wanted to join a scheduled session, but you had to have the video sent to you instead, it would be a full length recording of that session. When you are browsing, you can search for videos, you can filter by a variety of different things. Uh, when you find one that you, you think is, is interesting, there's a few different things that you can do with it. Um, you can share directly to the students. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can do it through Google Classroom or you can copy uh, the link and send it to your students that way. Um, and there's also uh, an ability for you to add to a playlist. Uh, and that essentially means that I'm gonna create a sort of um, list of videos that you could then share with students and give them choice. So maybe it's a you know list of videos that are tied to orthopedics or to law or to public safety, whatever you can think of um, that you think is most meaningful for the group of students that you work with, shoot them the playlist. You can copy and paste the link to that and send it to them. And then they can choose what video that they wanna engage with uh, that way as well. I'm gonna drop over to here because I don't wanna neglect the idea that everything I've shown you isn't just educator driven. Um, so I'm gonna log in as a student and you'll see that students will um, essentially have a very similar looking version of the platform. Uh, but obviously there's there's this, some things that they can do and some things that they can't. Um, so students will never be able to, it seems obvious, that's wanna make sure I say it, uh, students will never be able to make a request for a professional. Um, it is not built to connect students directly with professionals. That type of connection always must be facilitated by an educator. Now, with that said, um, when if you're a virtual program or if you have a session that is occurring, um, you know, and you're not necessarily going to be with the student themselves, maybe it's occurring later in the day or in the morning or during their lunch hour, um, you can invite a student to a live session. And I'll show you how you're going to be able to do that. If you look here on the student side, you'll see that for them to join a scheduled session, they can browse them. They can take a look at what sessions exist. But in order for them to actually join a session through the platform, they have to enter a code. So this is not much different than codes that, you know, have been used for, you know, some of the things like Kahoot and whatnot. Like the code is just sort of the general access point for a student to get into a session. So if I go back to the teacher side, and if I look at some of these upcoming industry connections, and I want to invite a student to one of these sessions, then I would need to register and by the way, if you register and, and don't show up, obviously it's not ideal, uh, but don't feel like, you know, something bad is going to happen if, if, if 
that is in fact the case. If you're just registering to invite students, that's perfectly fine. Um, we do ask for your phone number. I will say the only reason the phone number is added is because if something happens and the session is canceled last minute, you know, uh, professionals will will sometimes have things come up. Like we've had them have to go to the hospital or, you know, certain things happen. It, you know, it's obviously people to people interactions, you know, you know, things happen. Uh, but here's where that access code is going to be. So after you um, register, you'll have this access code and you can copy that, go over to the student side, send it to the students, they enter it here. And now the student is also registered for that session. Um, and I wanted to highlight that uh, particularly for our virtual programs, because uh, it really is probably the, the most difficult thing to do as part of a virtual program is provide those interactions, those um, industry connections and things like that. This is a really quick and easy way to be able to do that for those students. Uh, it's also great for, you know, I always feel bad when you have an activity planned and a student is absent. Um, and obviously if it's an unplanned absence, there's only so much you can do and it depends on why they're absent. Uh, but if it's a planned absence and you have a guest speaker that you're planning to, to, to engage with your class that day, it really would be great if they didn't miss out on that. Um, and so you could just say, oh, okay, well, if you're absent, log into the platform, use the code, and you're going to be able to access the session from home. Um, so we definitely don't want to leave those students out because uh, just because they're absent. The same thing when it comes to videos, <clears throat> students um, don't automatically have access to the videos that you have access to. However, um, Typically, a teacher would have to generate a code and send it to their students, and the students would use that code to be able to watch videos. Um, what I showed you before, if you, if I go back to the teacher side and I go to browse video library and I find another video, I showed you that you could take a video and you can share the link. So I just want to like highlight a key distinction here. Um, you can copy this link and send it to anyone, to a student, to a parent to someone else in the community, to another teacher, anyone would be able to watch that video through that link. So individual videos and videos that are part of a playlist can be sent to students and they can watch the videos um, that you send directly to them. However, uh, the ability for a student to explore and browse the video library on their own is restricted until you give them a code. Um, I didn't get a chance to sort of revert my student account to one that didn't have the code to show you what that looked like. Um, but I have a code that I can send to you that you can give to the students. Um, and we can find a way to make sure every student in Nevada does have access to the video library. Uh, so we have a code already generated for you. You don't have to do that. All a student would have to do is they would click on browse video library just like over here where it says session code, there's gonna be a button right here that says enter the code to open up video library. Once you guys get that code from me, uh, you can share that with your students and then they can open up the video library um, if you want them to. <laughs> Obviously it's up to you if you want them to have access to the video library, um, but they would then be able to um, browse the video library on their own with that code. And then the last thing I wanna show you is something called the Career Explorer. This is, um, <clears throat> it's basically an integration with ONET. Uh, it pulls in labor information from the US Department of Labor, and it's just a way for students to be able to browse various careers and kind of help uh, them understand and think about what they might be interested in. Uh, so a variety of different ways that they can search for different careers using just keywords or searching by different clusters and industries. Uh, but if I go and take a look at what some of these look like, then students are going to be able to get a little bit more information about sort of the, the, the key aspects of different careers. Um, you'll notice that there's a few different pieces of content in here. 
uh, that kind of help them understand. I mean, obviously salary is probably the first thing they're going to look at, but it is important to look at some of them and think, okay, what kind of education is required? Uh, we want to use that information to have realistic conversations. Um, but we also will, will see that personality is one of the um, pieces that is tied to each career as well. Uh, and we actually have a built-in uh, interest profiler that's going to help students understand what type of personality they might um, they might lean into a little uh, the most. And you could find that here as well. So when students log in, you can see I've already taken the quiz at one point, uh, but the interest profiler, which many of you might recognize, it is the same interest profiler. It's just pulled in from ONET. Um, and it gives students an idea of how um, their interests tie to the Ryasek model or the different uh, sort of personality types that are also tied to various careers and careers that they would, might find most rewarding. Um, and so once they take the quiz, it's like 30 questions. It's very uh, quick and straightforward. It looks a lot like this, <clears throat> very simple. takes five to 10 minutes maybe, um, but they just answer a series of questions. And then when they're done, uh, they're gonna get their results. And it'll also tell them some matching careers uh, that they might be interested in. So this is a really great, um, a great way to gather that information uh, from the students. And that actually might inform the kind of professional you might wanna request um, if you wanna use sort of student feedback as a, as a method to understand, okay, what types of people uh, do I actually want to bring in and engage uh, with my students? That just about sums it all up. Um, what I wanted to do was, if everyone has an opportunity, feel free to go to nevada.mepris.com. And I think now would be... a a wonderful opportunity for me to make sure that everyone here actually has access to their account. Um, so if you go to nevada.netverse.com and if you go to sign in and use either Google or Microsoft, um, depending on your district and check in the top right, I want you to verify whether it says platinum here. I'm in my student account. That's why it doesn't say either that or or anything else because I'm looking at it as a student. But for you, it should say platinum. And if it doesn't, uh, you can feel free to drop in the chat, either confirm yes or no. Um, and if it's no, pretty much as soon as I get off this call here today, I'll make sure you get upgraded. All right, so I got people saying, saying they're bronze. Oh, one of the things I will say is, um, Actually, I don't need to say it. Let's just get everyone upgraded. Alyssa's platinum. Nice. All right. So Tara, Kayla, and Mary, if you wouldn't mind, um, can you shoot me your email and school and district? Or if you prefer, you can actually email it to me and I'll make sure you get it. All right. I did see the question, what's the difference between bronze and platinum? Um, with bronze, you wouldn't be able to make requests for guest speakers. Uh, you would also be limited in the video library. It's it's really, it's just a paywall uh, in terms of the amount of access you have. Um, and obviously since, you know, we have a, a contract with the state, so we just wanna make sure everyone's able to, uh, to get upgraded. I see it's a lot of the CCSD people I've been trying to get CCSD integrated with Clever for months. <laughs> um, it'll happen eventually, I'm sure. But I think for a while, it's going to be a little bit of a... A little bit of sort of wait and, wait and see kind of thing. And... Okay, so I have Tara's email, Mary's email. Okay. 
And Kaylin, answer your question. Uh, once you once you shoot me that email, or once I get you upgraded, um, I will send you everything you need to know to get started. Um, today being the kind of hey, here's what it is, and here's how to get logged in. And I'm glad a lot of people took an opportunity to get logged in. Um, I, I think again, I, I'd already created a whole bunch of resources, and I sent them out uh, both physical copies and digital copies to various district leaders. Um, so I'll just make sure I send the same stuff to you guys directly. Are there any, uh, any additional questions, thoughts? No problem, Kayla.